In this installment, we're going to be going over the MLB bet sleep for Saturday, August 31st. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Chef D, and I'm here to bring you the winning ingredients for our August 31st MLB bet slate we got going on for Saturday. But before we do dive into that, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MetsNetsChefD. Don't forget about that TikTok at Chef underscore D91. And don't forget about that Patreon. Uh, right now, we're at the homepage of the YouTube channel, currently at 8.22 thousand subscribers. This is the road to 10K, and we are well on our way because you guys are showing up each and every single day. If you're already subscribed, continue to like and comment. That's going to help the YouTube algorithm so we can grow to a much broader audience. All right. Um, for the Patreon, we finally had a solid uh, day come through. Um, and these are some of the winnings that uh, I, I did post uh, in MLB. Uh, we had one parlay, Miami Marlins and Cincinnati, Cincinnati Reds, plus 211. Reds and Phillies, plus 182. Phillies and Blue Jays, two, plus 252. And then late night college football, love the value on the Colorado Buffaloes at halftime when they were down. Uh, they were a minus two and a half uh, favorite here. Uh, so definitely hopped on that at halftime. All right. So if you want to sign up for winning plays, remember the link down below is for the Patreon. You're going to get daily bets, future bets, and you're going to get access to that group chat that's going off 24 seven. Also down below uh, will be the bet stamp link, though the article for bet stamp is only good for Monday through Friday. They do not update during the weekend. OK, uh, so get signed up and let's get into this late at stamp and sign up experts to provide you guys with an easier way to sign up with any sports book in your area. If you go to the link in the description down below, you will be directed to this page you see here. It automatically displays all available sports books in your area, plus their current promotions. For example, you could take the plays given in this video and apply it to any other sports books you don't currently have and reap the rewards. Now let's get into the slate. First game up, we have the Chicago Cubs 68 and 66. Going against the Washington Nationals 61 and 73. Uh, current odds for this game here. Chicago Cubs road favorites minus 135 with the comeback of the Nationals at a plus 110. Total set at nine. Uh, starting pitching matchup here, Javier Assad, 6-4 with a 3.15 ERA. Going up against DJ Hurst, 2-6 with a 3.84 ERA. Uh, for the Nationals and DJ Hurst, this is a much better spot for him. He tends to pitch uh, better at home with a 3.59 home ERA. Uh, to righties, he's given up a very low whip and average to both. So that's going to be the positive sign for him. He's in the, the comfort and the confines of Washington Nationals uh, Park here. And then Javier aside, he struggles on the road. He has a 3.96 ERA on the road. And his main issues is against right-handed bats. Uh, 2.33 home run per nine. A 304 batting average and a 1.48 whip. Not to mention some power to lefties as well at a 1.05. Uh, I think that uh, the Nationals are the correct side here they have the value so just being safe the plus one and a half on the national side where i think uh dj hers is the the better pitcher here at home going up against javier aside who has some power issues against righties he's going to see about four to five righties in this nationals uh lineup as well uh so give me the nationals plus one and a half on that run spread. If I had to go to the over or the under, I would lean towards the under nine on the total. Next up in Comerica Park here, we have the Detroit Tigers 68 and 67. Going against the Boston Red Sox here, uh, 69 and 65. Current odds for this matchup here, Tigers are home favorites, minus 165 with the comeback of the Red Sox at a plus 140. Total set at seven and a half. For this pitching matchup here, Tariq Scooball here, uh, lefty, 15 and 4 with a 2.58 ERA, 0.95 whip. Going against Nick Pavetta, 5 and 9 with a 4.61 ERA and a 1.13 whip. Uh, for Tariq Scooball, 
Obviously, this is a, a prime spot for him at home um, here. Elite at home with a 2.28 ERA, very high K percentage uh, to lefties and righties, limits the home runs. He's been literally the Cy Young candidate so far this season. Nick Pavetta, on the other hand, has some issues, a 4.31 ERA on the road. Um, he's seeing some issues against lefties in the power department, a 1.91 home run per nine, and versus righties, a 3.03 home run per nine, a 303 batting average, and a 1.45 whip. So there are some avenues here that the Tigers offense can get going, despite the fact they have struggled uh, uh, this year and putting up offense. Nick Pavetta can help in that area for the Detroit Tigers to get some runs and some support for Tariq Skubal. All right, so for this game here, I'm going to be leaning on the side of the Detroit Tigers here with Skubal and this pitching matchup going up against Pavetta. So give me the Tigers on the money line. And for the over-under, I don't expect them to go crazy on them, but I do expect them to give some run support here to Tariq Skubal to shut down the rest of the Red Sox. So give me the uh, money line Tigers and the under of seven and a half. Next up in Globe Life field here, we have the Texas Rangers, 63 and 71, going up against the Oakland Athletics, 58 and 76. The current odds here, we have the Rangers home favorites, minus 160, with the comeback of Oakland A's at plus 135. The total set at eight and a half. Uh, for this pitching matchup here, we have Joey Estes going up against Cody Bradford. Estes has been pretty impressive this year. Six and six, 4.37 ERA, a 1.12 whip. Cody Bradford, four and two, with a 3.31 ERA and a .94 whip. All right, looking at these two pitchers here, uh, the reason why uh, Estes is a little bit of a little uh, Debbie Downer here on the road is his home road splits, okay? At home in Oakland Coliseum, pitching phenomenal 2.31 home run, per, uh, excuse me, um, ERA at home. On the road, it's a totally different story. A 7.17 ERA um, on the road. So he's a totally different pitcher giving up all of his home runs on the road. All right. So that is the issue. All the power he is giving up outside of Oakland. And he's going to be going up against a uh, team here in the Texas Rangers that have a ton of power versus lefties. A 2.29 home run per nine, uh, two, uh, 275 batting average and a 1.78 whip versus righties. A 1.57 home run per nine a 305 batting average and a 1.35 whip. So advantages are going to be on the side of the Texas Rangers here. Cody Bradford has been elite at home and in general since he's come up, all right, at, at home, a 2.75 ERA, giving up a low whip and average to both lefties and righties. Um, he just faced, well, not just faced the team. He recently faced his team not too far uh, long ago. It was six and two thirds um, innings pitched, zero earned runs and seven strikes. Outs, all right, so I'm liking what I've seen out of Cody Bradford, and I see the issues here with Joey Estes outside of Oakland. So give me the Texas Rangers on the money line and give me the under of eight and a half. No, you know what? I'm gonna go with the over. We're gonna go with the over on the eight and a half. The juice is on the side of the over. We're gonna go with that. And this Texas Rangers offense here getting and tattooing Joey Estes, going by what we see from this ERA. And many other issues here. So Rangers money line over eight and a half. In Men and Maid Park here, we have the Houston Astros 72 and 62. Going up against the Kansas City Royals 75 and 60. Looking at the current odds for this one here. Royals um, are uh, underdogs here plus 115. And we have the Houston Astros as favorites minus 135. Total set at seven and a half for this one. Interesting pitching matchup. Cole Reagan's 10 and 8, 3.28 ERA, 1.16 whip. Going up against UC Kikuchi, newly acquired here, 6 and 9 with a 4.39 ERA and a 1.27 whip here. Uh, Kikuchi, his issue is going to be that home run ball. He gives up power to lefties and righties, all right? Versus lefties, a 2.57 home run per nine. Versus righties, a 1.11 home run per nine. Um, he did face the Royals earlier in this season. Six innings pitch, two earned runs, and four strikeouts in that one. Cole Reagans has been elite this season, uh, the phenom for the Royals. 
He pitches better on the road with a 2.68 ERA, a low whip and average to both lefties and righties. And versus righties, who he's going to see the majority of, he has a 28% strikeout rate versus righties as well. Uh, so for this one here, I'm going to be going with the side of the underdog and Cole Reagans and the Kansas City Royals here to get an upset win here against UC Kikuchi, who I think just... That home run ball is going to be the Achilles heel for him. And I think that some of these power bats of the Royals can get to Kikuchi in this game. So money line on the Royals here and give me the over of the seven and a half. Next game up in Target Field, Minnesota Twins, 72 and 61, going to be against Toronto Blue Jays, 66 and 70. Uh, for this matchup, Minnesota Twins are... Uh, home favorites minus 160 with a comeback of the Toronto Blue Jays at a plus 135. Total set at eight and a half. Uh, pitching matchup here, Jose Barrios, 13-9, 3.72 ERA, 1.17 whip. Going against Zebby Matthews, 1-1 one one, with a 3 ERA and a 1 whip. All right, so Zebby Matthews has been super impressive this season so far. Been very dominant versus righties. He's given up some power versus lefty batters here at 2.16 home run per nine. Other than that, across the board, besides that power versus lefties, he has been phenomenal in some of his starts. Starts. Um, it hasn't been much, but it's been three starts here, five innings. He's given up either two runs or one earned run and showed uh, a decent strikeout rate in two out of those three games. OK, um, in his starts, they are two there. Excuse me. They're one and two in his three starts. But some positive signs for uh, despite the fact he did go up against some tough competition, the Padres and the Royals in two out of those three games. OK, Jose Barrios has some home road splits. He's going to be the cause of concern uh, on the road of four point six seven road ERA versus lefties, uh, even worse. Home run per nine versus lefties, 2.12 home run per nine. And versus righties, a 2.36 home run per nine. Not to mention versus righties, a 303 batting average and a 1.37 whip. All right. So for the Minnesota Twins, I'm going to be relying on them and their bats and pitcher here. Toronto Blue Jays, for the majority of their season, have not been able to score runs. That has been their Achilles heel. They've been pitch putting up solid pitching efforts, but that's mainly at home. And you're getting Jose Barrios on the road where he pitches worse. All right. So I'm going to be leaning on the side of the power bats of the Minnesota Twins to take advantage of Jose Barrios and his home run per nine to lefties and righties. So Twins on the money line. And and I do like the under eight and a half. I expect the Twins to get to Jose Bears, but not totally tattoo him here. And I expect a nice solid performance here from Zebby Matthews will be seen at his first three starts. In Citizens Bank Park here, Philadelphia Philly 79-55. But I'm against the Atlanta Braves 73 and 61. Current odds for this matchup here. Braves are plus 130 with the comeback of the Philadelphia Phillies, minus 155. Total set at seven and a half. Pitching matchup, Max Freed, uh, eight and seven with a 3.50 ERA, a 1.20 whip. Going to be against Zach Wheeler, 12 and six with a 2.74 ERA and a one whip. All right. Uh, Zach Wheeler has been utterly dominant against this Atlanta Braves team uh, so far this year. 12 innings pitch, two earned runs and 13 strikeouts. Uh, just clear cut uh, this whole season long. He's been phenomenal, as you can see in his record, in his ERA and that low whip. Um, just giving up a little bit of the home run ball here and there, but he's kept a very high strikeout rate, which has been really impressive for Zach Wheeler. Max Reed on the other side has been good um, on the road at 3.14 ERA on the road, but he's had troubles against this Philadelphia Phillies team more than once. All right. One inning, uh, excuse me, one outing, seven innings pitched, two earned runs, four strikeouts. That was solid. But the outing before that, six innings pitched, five earned runs two home runs and only four strikeouts and then in the first start of the season for max freed he didn't even get to go one inning pitch he gave up three earned runs three walks and only one strikeout so we can see the Philadelphia Phillies getting to Max Freed on multiple occasions here. So give me the Philadelphia Phillies on the money line in this one here. And I'm gonna go towards the over seven and a half on the total. Last but not least we have the Baltimore Orioles here in Coors Field going against the Colorado Rockies. Rockies are 50 and 84. 
uh, excuse me, 50 and 85, and Orioles are 77 and 58. Looking at the current odds, Orioles are minus 175 on the money line with the comeback of the Rockies at a plus 145. Pitching matchup, Dean Kramer, 6-9 with a 4.3 run ERA, 1.27 whip. Going against Ryan Feltner, 1-10 with a 4.95 ERA and a 1.43 whip. Uh, this game here, um, I'm going to be leaning towards the side of the Baltimore Orioles here. Dean Kramer pitches much better on the road and outside of Oriole Park. Uh, very strong against uh, righties and lefties, low whip and average to both. Um, and Feltner is going to be a gas can here. Uh, obviously, looking at that record and looking at that ERA, um, when you're talking about a 5.96 uh, home ERA in cores against these bats here in the Orioles, this is a very daunting task versus lefties, a 1.65 home run per nine, a 342 batting average and a 1.76 whip and versus righties, a one uh, home run per nine, a 294 batting average and a 1.41 whip. This does not bode well for guys like uh, that. He's going to have to be seeing Santander, Gunnar Henderson, Colton Kowser, uh, Jackson Holiday. It, it, the, the list goes on and on with this matchup here. There's going to be a clean sweep for the Orioles to end things. Give me the Orioles on the money line. Give me Orioles minus one and a half and give me the over of the total of 11 and a half thank you guys for tuning in let me know in that comment section down below do you agree do you disagree uh talk about some props or plays down below in that comment section guys if you want to sign up for that patreon remember that's provided in that description section as well you get access to daily bets future bets and access to that group chat that's going off 24 7. i recently reposted the world series future bets for mlb um, to get you guys ready into that or just to refresh all the new members that came in on that particular future so you can get in it right now before the playoffs start as well. So thank you guys for tuning in. It's your boy Chef D. I'll be back very soon. Peace out.